Hi, I'm Lara, and today I'm going to be doing test review for question 9. This is my sister Melissa, and we're going to teach you some statistics. Okay, so for this question, as we just showed you, we're trying to look for the linear correlation coefficient r. So to get the r, we're going to use this big formula, which isn't really that scary. Um, your n is going to be your sample size. So you're going to count how many you have on each list, and that's going to be the, your n. Um, this big e is going to be the sum. And then you're going to do your x and your y values. Your L1, the number of hours spent in the lab, is going to be your x, and your grade is going to be your y. So you're going to do the n times the sum of x and y. So if you understand these values, you can break this down a lot easier. So you're going to subtract it by the sum of the x's times the sum of the y's divided by uh, the square root of n times the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared times square root and so on. So now you're going to take your list 1 and your list 2 that were given and you're going, you could do it by hand, and you'd find the sum of the x and the y, and then you'd have to find the sum of x and the sum of y, and so on. But we're allowed to use calculators, so all you have to do is plug in the numbers into the calculator. From there, you're going to go to stat, calculate, two, go to number two, two var stats, variable stat. And then you're going to put in your list. And you're going to calculate, and it's going to give you all of the values that you need. Your sum of x, your sum of x squared, your n, sum of x, sum of y, sum of y squared, and your sum of x and y. So you're just going to plug in exactly how the formula tells you. So for your n, your 8, your xy, 6,119, and so on. And then what you do have to do is you have to calculate it on your, just put it into your calculator. And make sure... You could try to do this section first, or this section inside the square root, and then the top, and then you put it all together just so you don't make any mistakes. Well, after you do this and you get the calculations by hand, if you want to check it, the calculator will actually do the entire problem for you. So you just put in list one and list two, and then you're gonna come over to, you're gonna go to stat, move over, move over to test and you're going to go on linear regression t-test and you just press enter make sure your lists are there and calculate and the entire answer is given to you it's going to be the r so r equals negative 0.335 so on this is how you calculate the linear correlation coefficient for r for elementary statistics oh now i understand Bye. <laughs> Hello, Amanda. Today we're going to learn how to do rank correlation, okay? So we're, we're trying to figure out the correlation between two different judges, sorry. Okay, so first step. You write out, write out your two lists, and then you're going to take the difference of each, of each rank. Five, one, one, six, two, four, and what's that? Five. And then you're gonna square each each difference, okay? You're gonna square each difference. And that's gonna give you 25, one, one, what's that? 36, four, 16, and 25, okay? Now that we found the squares of the difference, we're going to now get the sum of the difference. So we have the sum of d squared equals, so we're going to add each square. So we have 25 plus 1 plus 1 plus 36 plus 4 plus 16 plus 20. Let's get this. So we found the sum of the d squared equals 108. So now, we're going to use our formula. We 
wrapping up the problem basically. So, so we used our formula Rx equals 1 minus 6 times the sum of d squared and then we also used our n and we multiplied, we did our n squared minus 1. Okay, and so we plugged in our numbers in and we did that. We used the formula and we got negative 0.929. Okay? of $913. So for this problem, we're going to do a standard deviation or variance of one population for the test statistic. Use this equation right here, and from our problem, we get that the population standard deviation is $650, and our population, um, our sample is n, uh, is 22. And our sample standard deviation is $913. So we plug that into our formula, which is right here. And we get 21 times 913 squared divided by 650 squared. And you get 41.432, which is our new test statistic. And then we go and find our critical value on our table, A4. And so you go 21 over, and our critical, um, our significant significance level is 0 0.01, and you get 38.932. And so we have to um, test our hypothesis. So we reject it because there's su sufficient evidence to support the claim that incomes of men without college degrees have a standard deviation greater than $650. Okay. I'm Ashley, and this is Amanda. Come here. Um, I'm going to show you how to do a cumul um, cumulative frequency distribution. So this is the original table. Um, these are the IQ scores, and these are the original frequencies. So you're going to use the original frequency values, um, 2, 33, 35, 7, and 1, right there. And you're going to add the first two together to get the second um, cumulative frequency. And then you're going to add the sum of those two frequencies to the third one to get the third cumulative frequency. And then you're going to add um, the fourth frequency to the sum of those three frequencies so you can get the fourth cumulative frequency. And then you're going to add the last frequency to the sum of those four frequencies to get the last cumulative frequency. And as a result, the table will end up looking like this. You're going to replace the class limits shown here with expressions of less than. So these will now look like less than 70, less than 90, less than 110, and so on and so forth. And that's it.